and welcome to a Mobile App Developer Academy course on working with selectors. I'll show you all the necessary steps to add a selector to your mobile apps. You can use selectors to provide the user with simple controls to filter data in grids, graphs, and widgets. I'll teach you how to create and configure attribute element selectors, metric selectors, and metric qualification selectors. You'll need MicroStrategy Web, MicroStrategy Mobile, and an iPad or iPad simulator. I'll start by demonstrating a completed document with selectors. I'll then use MicroStrategy Web in design mode to recreate the selectors. After that, I'll add metric qualification selectors to a document. Here, we're looking at an iPad app, and this is the Regional Sales Overview document. This document contains three grid graphs and three selectors. When the user selects a region using the selector at the top, all three grid graphs change to display data only for the selected region. The month selector also affects the data the grid on the right displays. Notice that the values in the grid reflect the selected month and the selected country. And finally, we have a metric selector in the lower half of the document. The user can choose to display data for profit growth, revenue growth, or profit margin metrics. In MicroStrategy Web, let's open the document in design mode so we can recreate the selectors you saw in the iPad app. We're going to start by adding a region attribute element selector to the top of the document. Use the insert menu to add a selector. Note that there is a large range of selector styles and types. You can use these selectors here for selecting attribute elements or selecting metrics. We're going to start with a link bar selector. Place the selector on the canvas. Right click it and select properties and formatting to edit the options for the selector. In the general area, name the selector. Select region. Clear the Show Title Bar checkbox, because the function of the selector will be obvious to the user in this case. In the selector area, leave the action type as Select Attribute Element, because we want the user to be able to select a particular attribute element. And for source, select Region. In the Target section, move each of the grid graphs to the selected box. So we're going to move the Regional Performance, Mini Bar, and Regional Growth Trend grid graphs to the selected box. Those are all of the grid graphs in the document, and we want the selector to target all of them. Clear the Show Option for All checkbox, because in this case, we don't want to give the user the option to tap All to see data for all regions at once. Instead, we only want to allow users to tap the names for the individual regions. I want to take a moment to discuss a really important setting located right under where you choose the selector targets. By default, selectors act as filters. This means that each time the user changes the selection, the app sends a new query. If you clear the Apply Selections as a Filter checkbox, the selector will function by slicing the data instead of filtering it. This means that data for all possible selector values will be sent to the document at load time and then sliced according to the user's selection. The trade-off is that slicing instead of filtering can sometimes make a document slower to load, but the document will have more responsive selectors. Another important consideration is that when you apply selectors as filters, your document will not work in offline mode. To enable your document to work in offline mode, Clear the Apply Selections as Filter checkbox. Now go to the font area so we can change the font formatting. White will provide a nice contrast with the background. Click OK and save the document. Let's switch back to the iPad app. The user can select a region to filter all three grid graphs on the fly. Now in MicroStrategy Web, I'll add a drop-down selector so the user can choose a month. So I've just skipped ahead a bit and named the selector, set it up so that it sources month, 
hidden the title bar, and I've targeted just this grid over here instead of every grid graph on the document. Click Save. And we have one more selector we're going to add to the document for now. This time, we're going to add a metric selector. On the Insert menu, point to Selector and select Link Bar. Go to the Properties and Formatting window, and I'm going to name this Select Metric. And for the action type, we're going to use Select Metric and target the Regional Growth Trend Graph. We're going to keep things simple and hide the option to select all metrics at once. And one more thing, again, we're going to make the font color white to contrast with the background. Click OK, save the document. And now, on the iPad app, the grid here is targeted both by the region selector we made earlier and the month selector. The user can tap the metric selector at the bottom to choose which metric is displayed on the graph. So far, you've seen selectors that use the link bar and drop-down styles. For each of those styles, the user could only make a single selection at a time. There are also selector styles that can permit multiple selections. I've modified the document so that there is a region selector at the top that uses the button bar style. There's also a call center selector on the left that uses the list box style, and the user can swipe to see all the call centers available. The user can tap to select multiple regions, then tap a region again to deselect it. The same goes for call centers. Tapping all will select everything, and tapping all again will deselect everything. Suppose the user has selected these regions, Northeast and Northwest, and then decides that he or she is interested in the Washington DC call center. We get no data returned for this view because the filter excludes all data. The reason this happens is that the Washington DC call center is neither in the Northeast nor in the Northwest, so there's no data to show in the grid or graph. This is potentially confusing for the user. We want the call centers available, or in view, to vary depending on which regions the user selects. There are two possible ways to achieve this effect, and your choice is transparent to the end user. In MicroStrategy Web, open the Properties and Formatting window for the call center selector. Recall that there is a difference between using a selector to filter data and using a selector to slice the data. Clearing Apply Selections as a Filter checkbox will cause the selector to slice the data rather than filter it. Once we've cleared the checkbox, we can now enable the option to update when there is no data for the current selection. Let's go with this option and see what happens when we run the document on the iPad. Now the Call Centers selector displays only the call centers that are available for the selected regions. I'll switch back to MicroStrategy Web so we can see the other option for dealing with the selector choices that exclude all data. We can target the call center selector from the region selector. This will cause the call center selector to present different choices to the user based on which region is selected. Right-click the region selector, go to Properties and Formatting, and for Targets, select Call Center. Right-click Region Selector, go to Properties and Formatting, and for Targets, add Select Call Center. Save the document. When you view the document on the iPad, you'll see that the call center is available in the list box. Depends on which regions the user selects. We have used attribute element selectors and a metric selector. The next two selector styles we'll use are for filtering based on metric values. Here's a simple document with one graph. First, let's add a metric slider. Now 
Name it Sell Profit and give it a custom title, Profit Range. Set the source metric to profit and target the graph. Now we'll add a metric qualification selector for the revenue metric. Name it Sell Revenue and give it the title Revenue Rank. Set the source metric to revenue, target the graph, and this time for qualify on, select rank highest. We want the user to be able to see the top 10 call centers, top 20 call centers, and so forth. You can determine the default value for the selector when a mobile user loads the document. You can set the default to be the first element, the last element in the selector, or you can set a specific default selector value. We're going to use this option. Click OK and switch to editable mode. Drag the profit range slider to approximately $30,000. Then set the revenue rank selector to less than or equal to 10 so that the user will initially see the top 10 call centers in terms of revenue rank. I'll fix up the formatting a little, and we're ready to save the document and view it on the iPad. As you can see, the selectors enable the user to filter the call centers based on profit and revenue rank. In this course, you've seen how to add attribute element and metric selectors to a document. For a second document, you saw how to create and configure metric qualification selectors. Keep in mind that the selectors covered in this course can target grids, graphs, or widgets. In addition, selectors can target entire panel stacks. For information about targeting panel stacks with selectors, see the Working with Panel Stacks course. There are other types of selectors not covered in this course. Panel stack selectors switch panels within a panel stack. Transaction services selectors perform functions such as submitting a form. And that's a wrap for this MATA course on selectors.